Hello, we're back today to talk about one of the first assault rifles, this Maschinen Karabiner 42 from Henel, the ancestor of the famous Sturmgewehr. But before we get into the story, a big thank you to the Musée de l'Armée for hosting me and allowing me to film this MKB 42, and a big thank you to the channel's supporters, whether via TP or player. By the way, I invite you to join them via the links in the description. This weapon is the result of the development of a new type of ammunition with the concept of intermediate cartridge, less powerful than cartridges like the 8mm Mauser, but still effective at several hundred meters. Also, one of the big advantages of these smaller cartridges is that they are more controllable, especially when fired on automatic. The development of these new cartridges doesn't really date back to the Second World War, as the concept of intermediate ammunition can be traced back to the late 19th century, but it was mainly in the 30s that German engineers really worked on the concept. The result was the 792 by 33 millimeter cartridge, 8 millimeter short, and we now need a gun to use it. And the development of this new weapon, or rather these new weapons, was to take place relatively discreetly, as Hitler was not particularly interested in this project for weapons with a cartridge weaker than the 8 millimeter Mauser. However, in 1939, the Central Office for Technical Development and Weapons Production launched a program to develop this new weapon, with two companies taking part. On the one hand, we have Walther with the MKB-42W, and on the other, we have Heinel with the MKB-42H, which is this model. In fact, Heinel's technical director was uh, Hugo Schmeisser, whom we've talked about in previous videos. These MKB-42 were sent to the Eastern Front to be tested, and some problems were reported. At the end of these tests, Hinnell's weapon is preferred, thanks to its greater reliability and less complexity than the MKB-42W, which I hope will be the subject of a future video. In fact, Walter withdrew from the project, as the company didn't have the resources to pursue the development of a new assault rifle and Walther had enough on its plate with the production of, among others, the Walther P-38. Despite the good feedback on the MKB-42H, the gun isn't perfect. Criticism has been leveled at the lack of a flash suppressor, and the magazine is too long, which can make shooting prone a little bit difficult. And a few modifications will be made before the gun goes into production, such as a new twist rate. A bayonet lug, and a folding dust cover to protect the ejection port. Germany had hoped to manufacture around 10,000 MKB 42Hs per month, but this was never to be. All the more so as the concept of the assault rifle was to evolve by modifying its firing mechanism, which of course gave birth to the Sturmgewehr. First of all, they wanted to switch from open bolt to closed bolt firing, with a hammer as well, as the MKB 42H doesn't have one. They also want to get rid of the gas expansion chamber that is this piece, because in the end, engineers didn't think it was very useful and it will disappear with the Sturmgewehr. And if you'd like to see how the MP44 and STG44 evolved, I'd refer you to the video I made a year or two ago, because now we're going to take a closer look at this MKB42H. This MKB42H has a distinctive look but once you've got the hang of it, you'll quickly find your bearings compared to a Sturmgewehr. The firing selector, for example, will fall naturally under the thumb. We have a relatively modern pistol grip uh, and a predominantly stamped steel construction, quite innovative for the time. As with the Sturmgewehr, our magazine ejection button is on the left. Our firing selector is here. And this button will enable the gun to be fired in semi-automatic or automatic mode. And in automatic mode, the rate of fire is relatively low, around 500 rounds per minute. Despite criticism of the length of the 30-round magazine, it was retained and used by the MP43 and MP44. We can see the marking. MKB42 and 
UMP43. The safety mechanism is different and operates much like that of an MP40. It is operated by the charging lever. You can push the cocking lever in when the bolt is forward, blocking any movement of the bolt. There's also a notch, typical of submachine gun, in which to insert the charging handle. And when you want to shoot, you put it down. And when you pull the trigger, the bolt will move forward, chamber, and fire the cartridge right away. In terms of weight and dimensions, the weapon weighs 4.9 kilos unloaded and is 94 centimeters long. On the right, there's a flap to cover the ejection port, which automatically opens when the gun is fired, a bit like on an IR-10 or AR-15. All in all, our sights are fairly conventional, with a fully protected front sight. And a rear sight, adjustable up to 800 meters. Note that the ZF-41 optic can also be fitted using the rail located under the rear sight. And under our barrel, we have our bayonet lug. The barrel being, of course, the tube below, the one above being a gas expansion chamber. In terms of mechanism, this is a weapon that fires with a long stroke piston and a tilting bolt. And to understand it better, I'm going to disassemble this MKB-42. We'll start, of course, by removing the magazine to proceed with the safety measures. And there's a pin here at the rear which holds the stock together. I'm going to remove it. On this model, we don't have a recoil spring. So there's no tension against the stock. This will also simplify my work slightly. I'll pull on the stock to separate the gun in two. And to remove the bolt, I check that the safety is not activated. I pull the charging lever rearward. Then I can remove the bolt assembly. Here we have the piston assembly and our bolt, which is this part which will tilt thanks to this claw. During firing, what's going to happen is that the sear is going to lower and we're going to have this whole assembly moving forward. A cartridge will be chambered. At this point, the bolt will move forward, locking and tilting. And the whole thing will strike the firing pin which is located at the rear. It has been removed on this MKB. And when it hits the rear, that's what triggers the gunshot. Some of the gas is then drawn through a vent to pressurize the piston, which then moves backwards. And as it moves backwards, it will pull on the bolt, causing it to rotate and allow it to move backwards. And our Extractor, which is this claw, will catch the casing which is then ejected through the ejection port. And as long as the trigger is held down in automatic mode, this process will repeat itself. The MKB-42H is a particularly interesting weapon. When you handle it, you'll really feel that it is the last update before the STG-44. Obviously, the biggest difference is that the MKBs fire with an open bolt, while the Sturmgewehr uses a closed bolt. And it's estimated that around 11,000 MKB-42Hs were produced, but many were lost or destroyed, as the Eastern Front was difficult for both equipment and men. Once again, I highly recommend reading the book by Hans-Dieter Handrich, if you want to delve deeper into the subject. The link is also in the description.
In any case, I hope this video has enabled you to find out more about this assault rifle. As usual, I invite you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and if you can, to join the TP in the description. See you soon for another video.